So learners, welcome uh, to today's lesson. Today's lesson, uh, we are going to discuss, we are going to begin a new chapter. And uh, our chapter today is making work easier. Making work easier. Making work easier. This is going to be our lesson today. Now, in making work easier, I want to remind you of something that you did uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the class six. And whenever you're working, of course, you use force. Whenever you're doing some work, there's a force that is going to be used. And in class six, we defined force as a push, a push or a pull. When you're doing some work, you have to push something or you have to pull something. Even sometimes you have to lift something. I don't know where we categorize that. But uh, a push, a uh, force is defined to be a push or a pull. So we are saying force is a push or a pull. And we remember that uh, we discussed the force of uh, inertia. The force of inertia among these other forces. And we say, what is the force of inertia? The force that uh, 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 enables an object to remain at its own state, whether pushed, whether when, when, when a, a motion is started or when it stopped. So other forces include weight, as I said, weight is a force, inertia, friction, friction is a force. Uh, gravitational, gravitational force, which is so uh, weight. And we say it, we measure a uh, force using uh, um, uh, an instrument called uh, spring balance. Spring balance, and the units are, are newtons. Newtons. And one kilogram is equivalent to. 10 newtons. Newtons. We use a spring balance to be able to measure a, a, a force. So, so much for that. I, I'm going to now introduce the lesson today of what we are supposed to do. Now, in this case, we are going to do we are going to do a force known as friction. So, we are going to look at friction, and we are going to define what friction is. But before we define what friction is, in this chapter making work easier, we are going to deal, number one, with the friction. Then number two, we look at the advantages and disadvantages of friction. Then ways of increasing and decreasing friction. That is our last point that we're going to mention. So this is a big chapter that we need to do a lot of practicals. So you'll be ready for this. So for us to be able to understand what friction is, I want to carry out a very simple activity here. And uh, this one we're going to rub our hands, like just like this. Nana, try to rub your hands just like this. Over one another, and you find that there is some difficulty the way you rub them. It's not so smooth. Yes. Try to touch something like uh, soap. Some water and soap and apply it on your, on, your, on, your, on your palms here and do the same. I want you to, to, to tell me which one is easy when there's no soap or when there is soap. We are going to answer that later in our, in our, in our lesson. Another activity I want you to do is that uh, try to pile some books in a, uh, put them in a carton and push them on a very rough uh, floor and then see what is going to happen. You are going to use a lot of, a lot of force to be able to push them. Bring the same same carton in a, in a floor that is very smooth or just pour some oil on that floor and then try to push to push that carton over that oil. You realize that you're going to use very little force uh, to push that. So the, the thing that makes that uh, uh, carton not to move is what we are defining as friction. And so we can just say friction is the force that opposes motion. So friction is the force 
that opposes motion or movement. To oppose meaning that if you are trying to move this direction, the force of friction will push you backwards from the direction, opposite direction where you're coming from. So that is what you call friction, frictional force. And frictional force will be found in so many areas, like when we, we rub the hands like this. There's friction in between the palms. So you realize that you're using a lot of force to be able to, 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 pull, I mean, to, to push, to move the, 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 the palms or all the hands over one another. But when you apply some oil or even uh, soap and you try to do the same, you're going to use less force. Same when you're pushing a, a, a carton full of books on a very rough surface. You realize that you're going to use a lot of force to be able to push it or even pull it. But if you apply some grease or even oil on the floor that you're going to push that carton, it's going to be very easy for you to push. Meaning that the force that is going to, to, to push uh, the carton backwards as you pull it is going to be reduced. So those are just but examples of, uh, of uh, uh, areas where we can find friction force. So in other words, the force of friction is going to, to resist the movement that you're trying to make. And so that is going to slow down the movement. So whenever there's a friction, friction force, movement is slowed down. Movement is slowed down or stopped completely. Stopped completely. So whenever there's friction, the movement you're trying to make is going to be slowed down or even stopped completely. Take for example, if you have uh, uh, some books, a, a, a textbook, trying to push it on a table. After you push the, the book on the table, it's going to move for some, uh, some distance and then stop. What is making it to stop? What is making it stop is a friction force that is pushing the book backwards. So, at some point, it slows the movement of the book and later, it stops it completely. Stops it completely. So, Lana, we are saying that the force of friction is, uh, is going to... So, we're saying the movement is slowed when you push the book on the table or it stops it completely because there's another force as you pu try to push it this way, that other force is pushing it the opposite direction. So that is one uh, 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 example of friction in, in action. So we said the carton of books, you slide it, and uh, after moving for a distance, it will stop because of friction. Another example of uh, such uh, 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 friction in action, we say it when rubbing hands and against one another. You find that it is not easy when you're rubbing them when there's no soap. But when you have added some soap in between the hands, you find it very, very easy for you to be able to, to push the hands over one another. So if, for example, there was no friction, you would you just push that carton on a, on, on, on a floor and it just continue going forever. It will never stop because there's no friction. But because of friction, it's going to stop at some point. So for you to be able to understand this well, you can also rub some, some materials. You can pick sandpaper. You know what sandpaper is? Sandpaper is used by uh, builders to, to smoothen some, some surfaces because it's rough. So it's going to, 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 to smoothen some surfaces. So if you rub them against one another, you find that there's a force that's going to be, I mean, sound is going to be produced from there. Because the sandpapers are already uh, rough. So you trying to, to, to move them one over the other, you find that there's a, a, a sound that's going to produce, be produced there because of the friction, the force that is opposing that movement. When you also take two pieces of wood and you try to rub over one another, you're also going to realize the same that there's friction in between the, 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 the two, the two uh, pieces of wood. Now I want you to look at uh, this, observe and observe well, these are uh, the soles of shoes. Can you be able to see this well? 
And this is the reason why these things are put there. You see, this soil is very rough. It's very rough. You can be able to see it clearly. I also want you to observe another, another shoe. Check that one. The soil. Look at these things. This is what I want you to see. They are very rough. I want you to see another shoe also. These things are what we are talking about. I want to take, for example, if we are moving uh, of late, in the recent past, we have been having uh, rains all over. So whenever you come out of your house and you're trying to walk, sometimes you slide on the ground. If your shoes doesn't have these things, that has, has led you to falling down. Find yourself on, on, the, on the floor. Because these are the rough parts that are going to hold you from sliding forever. But if they are, they are, they are not there, if they are, they are worn out, meaning that you are going to slide because this surface is smooth and the surface that you are also uh, 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 stepping on is also smooth. So you are going to continue sliding until you fall down. So what are we saying? Friction between your, 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 your feet, that is on the sh uh, shoes, uh, sole and the, and the ground, need to be increased every other time for you to be able to walk and walk easy. So such is an example of how friction can be used. But I want to stop at that point and uh, ask you to carry out various activities at home. Try to rub your hands at home. Pick some pieces of uh, 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 boards like wood. Try to rub them against one another. See how you can be able to, to fail. Also, if you have used uh, some soap, try to compare it when you don't have you don't have some soap on your hands and you see what you are going to experience. So the, the, the force that opposes motion, assuming you are pushing, this is a, 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 a board, a piece, of, a piece of wood, and you want to push it this direction. So meaning this is the ground. So force is going that direction. So what I'm saying is that if the force is going towards point S, meaning that our frictional force is going to go on the opposite direction. So we can find it going that direction. So any of these arrows shows the friction force. The reason why I've, I've put this question there is because it's a question in case if you're also in the exam. The label for you tell you this K, L, M, and maybe N. They ask you which arrow shows the force of friction. The force of friction, for you to get that question, you need first to identify the force, where the effort is being applied. This force is the so-called effort. Where the, the person is ap applying the effort. Where you're applying the effort, go to the opposite direction. That's where you find the friction force. And for us, sometimes they ask you, where can we place a, 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 a spring balance? Because in the beginning I told you that we, we, we measure force by using an instrument called a, a, a spring balance. Where do we place a spring balance? If you want to measure force in this particular question. Now, the, the place that we, play, uh, we place the, 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 uh, the spring balance is to the direction where the effort is going. Our effort is going that direction. So, we cling our, 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 our spring balance on this side, like that. Remember our force is going that direction, so we pull it that direction. So that's why we replace it. You place it on this side and pull it. Pulling to the same direction of the, of the effort. If you place it here, meaning that you are going to pull on the opposite direction, so you are going to assist the, 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 the friction force. So you only pull to the direction where the effort is going. So this is where we place it. After placing there, we can be able to measure how many newtons are these, are, are these are, are, are friction force. So this one person, I will not finish this uh, 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 lesson but uh, not mentioning because it's a very key question in an exam. So Lana, tomorrow, or the, other, the, the day that we go to meet, we are going to discuss the advantages of friction. So our next subtopic 
in this particular uh, 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 unit is going to be advantages of friction. We are going to see that friction has advantages more, more than you, you can be able to think because without friction, so many things are not going to happen. And I'm going to give you one example. Like for example, when you are lighting a matchbox, a matchbox looks like this. So it looks like this. So there's something smeared on this part where you, you, you place, I uh, mean, you, you strike using the using the, the, the matchstick. If this part is not going to be rough, this match, matchstick is not going to light, and so you will never cook. You will not, never get uh, some fire because this part is smooth. I want you to do it today, but make sure that you don't use Mama's matchbox because you will be bitter. Take a matchbox, smear some oil here, the cooking oil, and try to pick a matchstick and light it. If it's going to be to light, then I'll, I'll, I'll refer you to, be, to be being a magician. But if it's, I'm very sure this one is not, not going to light because this place is very, very smooth. Meaning that there's no, there's no, there's no friction between uh, uh, the matchbox, uh, this place, and the matchstick. If that friction is not there, this one is not going to light. So the others will be explained tomorrow. So let's meet tomorrow for another interesting lesson about friction uh, force which is a force that opposes motion. Have a blessed uh, afternoon, and may God bless you. Stay at home, stay safe, and sanitize. Thank you.